to help you there. So for this the, one, I forgot the sound. <laughs> there's no sound. I turned it off. Okay. So it's good. We're now open. Okay. Now we're going to start over again. We've got the sound turned on. Hi everyone. Welcome to the live webinar today. I'm Jody Barrows with the Square in a Square. If you're brand new to the Square in a Square, hang on. Stay tuned. We're going to show you how to really improve your piecing by learning the Square in a Square system. In our webinar today, we're going to show you some sale items that we have for the month of March or until they're gone, some are very limited quantities, meaning just one or maybe two, maybe three. And we're gonna show you how to do the square and a square system, option one, option three, option four. So that's the square and a square, the flying geese, and half square triangles. We're going to work on this beautiful quilt right here behind me, which is called Missouri Compromise, and another one that's hiding over here behind our train panel. So since this is a live event and it's on Facebook and YouTube and all of that, there's people that are joining us. So I'm going to wait just a couple of moments to start the teaching because I want them to be able to get in on the very beginning of it. So while we're doing that, let's look at a couple of the sale items that we have um, for sale. Now, for those of you that don't know, I have my own fabric company. It's called Square Textiles, and I design and create and import our own fabrics. Those of you that haven't used it, don't worry about it. It is a very, very top-of-the-line quality fabric, and I'm sure that there's many that are watching that would type in there and say, we have bought their stuff, and we get comments all the time that this is the best fabric that I've ever worked with. So I love the 1800s, I love that time period of history, but I also love those deep, rich colors that came from the dyes that they had, the colors that they had during that time of the 1800s. So majority of my fabric uh, comes from those vintage colors of the 1800s. They're very deep and very rich. Let's look at a couple of fabric packs that I have on sale for you. So this first one here is called a historical bundle. It's a two yard piece of a stripe that we call the cannon stripe. It's a two yard piece of our Civil War soldiers. And then it's also a two yard piece of our train panel. And that was the panel that was behind me. So maybe we can flip the camera back over here to the train panel. And it's a two yard piece of this. Now in the two yard piece of the train panel, you're gonna get uh, three completed panels plus maybe a little extra just kind of depending on where it's cut at the beginning and at the end. So that is an excellent value for one of our packs. I think that particular one, you get the three two yard pieces. I think it's $37. Now the website, if you go to the website of squareandsquare.com and in the search bar, just type in sale items, then you can see what pops up and you can do your shopping. Now, we do have, uh, we still have the free shipping for $150. So for $150, we have free shipping. Now, some of these items that are like a onesie of, if you decide you want that, you need to go in and put that in your cart and check out right away. If you have, because until you check out, that item is not yours. Now, we can combine your orders and um, add up, up, you know, like if you've got a $40 order here and a Twenty-one. If it all adds up to be the $150, we can adjust that so that you'll get your free shipping. So don't worry about that. Steve is great at organizing all the orders and getting them fixed just right for you. Now, for those of you that don't know, Steve is a retired pharmacist. So he's very particular about what goes in your bag, making sure that everything is correct before it goes out the door. So that is our two yard section. Let's look. Uh, so here's our train panel. When I refer to the train panel, this is what this is. So we have um, other train fabrics that we're going to show you, but since I love history in the 1800s, the um, Transcontinental Railroad was one of the fabric lines that I did, and you'll see some train tracks and some elements and some other things that go along with the train. So this is like the California side, and of course the railroad track was going east and meeting up with the east side. This is the east side. And the pictures and the drawings on here are replicas of the real things that were uh, drawn and, and uh, put in newspapers to talk about the Transcontinental Railroad and to talk about the Civil War soldiers. So let's look down here at our screen again. So here is one of the sale packs. You're going to get a two yard, a two yard, and a two yard of the train. And that's one of them. 
And then we also have this one right here, which is one yard pieces. So you're going to get a one yard of the cannon, a one yard of the soldier, and a one yard of what we call the red and dirt check. So that's a cute little bundle right there. You could jump in there, add some uh, basic backgrounds, and have some cute fabrics for a little quilt. Okay, so here's another one that we have on sale that has some of the trains in it. There are one yard pieces. There's five of them. And uh, it's usually a, um, over $60 you're going to get for about $35. So it's all three of the train tracks that we have. That other paper needs to be moved. Thank you. So it's one yard pieces. It's the red train track, the uh, kind of beige, ivory train track, the black one, the red and tan check, and then what we call the, the cream or the dirt element. So there are pictures of uh, trains on here, and this one was the cream element. So you, one of the, the bundles on sale is this one right here with the five pieces that all make this great little bundle. And then we have this one. This one is a limited quantity. Uh, there's only about four of these left. Um, you have um, a green, a beautiful mossy green. You have the blue and tan check, the lightest. You have the green star, the blue eagle, and you have the blue floral. Now, the reason why this one is limited is because of this piece of fabric right here. It came in the blue, it came in the red, and it came in the dirt. And the this is basically gone, so... Um, we can't do any more of that. So if you like this uh, particular one called the blue and green fabric pack, then you need to jump right in there and get that one ordered because that one, um, that one won't last to the end of the month. And then here is a two yard of the, of the train tracks. So you have a two yard of the red, the dirt, and the black. And the words that are on here are the phrases or the words that were used during that time period uh, when the Transcontinental Railroad was happening 150 years ago. So all of that is, is historical and history of the trains connecting the East and the West. And that was right after the Civil War. It was a very important part of our American history and part of building and bonding the country back together after it was torn apart with the, the Civil War. Now I'm going to show you a couple of machine quilting packs. Uh, I just mainly need to get my table cleaned off so that we can demo um, on it. So we do in our premium club, we have machine quilting classes, um, some on a bigger long arm, but most of them are on your home domestic sewing machine. And it's a great way to learn how to machine quilt because you can back it up and rewind it and go over and over again. And those are in what we call our Quilt Club Week and our Premium Club. Now, Premium Club is a club that where we do online teaching all year long, and Quilt Club Week is a very jam-packed one week. It's going to be the last week of September this year. You can go in now and join Premium Club, and you can go in and join Quilt Club Week. Quilt Club Week, you can start watching 2020, 2021, and 2022, and then uh, we'll have our new Quilt Club Week the last week of September of this year of 2023. Now, if you go in and join Premium Club, or if you're a member of Premium Club, Quilt Club Week comes with it. You don't need to join it um, separately. So both of those are great ways where you can go in and get in-depth um, teaching um, on machine quilting and on piecing and on uh, the square and a square. So we have some bundles for machine quilting and these are very limited. When these supplies are gone, then, then they're gone. So we have this little bundle that has the safety pins and they are curved so they're easy to baste your quilt uh, when you go in and stick that pin in and then bring it up. They're curved so they're, they're nice for the machine quilting. This is a chalk pack and you just put this in a little Tupperware container with a nice lid. Use those little spongy paint brushes and tap your paintbrush on the powder and then put it on your quilt with your stencil and it will leave that design on it. Very easy um, to do. And then this is a fine line water soluble pencil. So that's one of our packs that you can get it. 
And then we have another one. Oh, and they're also the machine quilting gloves. And then we have another pack that has um, rotary cutter gloves. And this is just a bigger chalk pa pack. It comes with a little pouncer, but I think it works just as well, maybe even better, just to put it in your own Tupperware container and use that little sponge uh, paintbrush. So these are limited. When these are gone, they're gone and there's not any more. So check out the machine quilting. All of those little sale packs that we have. Now these are some for some um, applique and we have very limited packs of that. We have one pack that has the, the glue and um, the bias tape, six spools of thread, um, needles, uh, threader, and I think there's only one pack. Normally about $64 you can get for $49. And then the, you can order the uh, bias threads individually. Of course you can order all those items individual. And then a couple of thread packs. Um, you can use, uh, these are the favorite, my favorite ones for um, hand applique, but you can use those threads for other things too. And then the uh, finger stiletto. I like to use the stiletto when I'm doing the um, starch um, applique part. And then also um, at your machine, if you don't have any fingernails, it's great to help have that extra little long um, fingernail on there so that you can keep things smoothed out and, and tucked around uh, around your foot on your sewing machine when you're sewing. So some great items uh, there for you. Um, let me show a couple more. Do we have any questions, Steve, before we, mm -hmm. we go on? Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the things that you saw if you, if you came on early while you were waiting was we have a special of the Maley Women Pattern Book. It's normally $35, and it has 34 quilts in it. So that's just a dollar and a penny for each pattern. And then the novels, the three novels you can see on the front, which ones, uh, one, two, and three. And the quilts that are made during the story time here are the quilts that are here. And this is all historical with um, our, our, our family and the women in our family, the quilts they made, and then the, the stories that they had. Some of you maybe have heard some of my lectures on um, the family and the quilts, but uh, really some fun, cool stuff. You can get the novels and the pattern book for a discounted price. Really a good price. I don't remember what it is. I have a question on the pounce. A question on the pounce. Okay. Is it iron off or, or dust brush off? off. Uh, you know, I don't know. Let me see. It says do not iron right on the package right here. Do not iron off. Do not iron off. Okay. Okay. That was the easy answer. Easy answer there. So, um, one of the one of the quilts that we're gonna work on today, this one right here, the Missouri Compromise, it is in that Maley Women book that I just showed that goes with the novels, and um, it um, it is in that book. And it seems like one other thing I was gonna tell you about it, I don't remember, but we'll come back to it. So this one right here, you maybe have seen some of these little containers right here, but they come um, they they come in a box like this. And all of these can be pushed around to any size. So see how you can use it by your sewing machine or put it by your applique table or where you're starching or whatever. And you can just push your stuff down in there. And that's a really good uh, way to hold your stuff. Of course, don't store with sharp um, items up. Put them down so that you don't run your hand across them and hurt yourself. So we've got some uh, bundles, some cell packs where you'll have those. And then, of course, your starch brush. And, of course, you need to store it upright, so it's great to have that to store your, your starch brush in. Also, we've got some bundles with um, some of the English paper piecing, which we use the starch method with. And you can uh, find some of those videos, videos on YouTube, Premium Club, Quilt Club Week, Facebook, um, any of those places you can find that. Okay, we're getting our table cleaned off a little bit more. I'm going pretty quick here through these because I want to get to the our teaching part. Now, here is another bundle that we have um, for this month. Our our uh, we're going to keep all of these sale items on until they're sold out or until the end of March. We've got some green ones that we're doing, so you know March is month for green, so that's our our promotion or our. Um, 
sale for this month. So in this one here, these are one yard pieces. You're gonna get five of those. Uh, you've got your red eagle, your red and dirt check, the green flags. Look at those tone on tone flags, I love those. Some of the historical red and green of the train elements. Beautiful, beautiful, very rich, deep colors, fun to work with. And the fabric is just as smooth and soft as butter. Okay, so these are little wool um, patterns. They're 16 by 20 inches. We taught with these in Premium Club. It's my last one for Christmas in my heart. And I think we have three of these left. So when those are gone, they're gone. Two uh, more historical bundles here. This one has a um, two yard piece of the train panel in it. And then it also has the book that has the history in it. Now the pattern is not in this one uh, for one of the train quilts that we had. This is just the history book and a two yard piece of the train panel. And then this one here is a three yard piece of the train panel and a three yard piece of the Civil War soldiers. So two more historical bundles there with some great value. And then this little, this little one right here, this one is um, Soldier's Comfort. You can see a picture of the quilt on the website. The kit is only $89. It's the last one. It's got that beautiful blue floral in it. It's got the uh, black star, some red, and a black check. Last one on it, last call, $89. The quilt is 58 by 74. It's a simple quilt, You just your regular tools. You don't have to have anything special. Sewing machine, rotary cutter, um, and just a regular ruler is all you need to make this one really simple and easy. And the last one on it. And now I wanna show you, I'll save these other ones for at the end and we'll get started on our teaching here. But I want you to see this beautiful green bundle that we have here. So this is our green check, our green star. This one is the dirt uh, flaming bud. This one is called the green stick. And this one is called the, the green fuzzy leaf. And these are all greens for this month of March. You can get all of this. You, they're two yard pieces, so two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten yards, $99, that's $10 a yard. That's an excellent value. And these are the ones that we're using in our quilts that we're going to be teaching with today. So we don't have kits made up um, for the two quilts that we're showing you. We're just showing, uh, gonna show you the bundles of the fabric um, and we have the green bundles for you. And then we also have the one called the neutral uh, bundle. And in this neutral bundle, this one is the dirt sticks, the black stick and the yellow fuzzy leaf. And all of these are ones that you'll see in the two projects that we're gonna work on today. So while I'm getting my um, cutting mat and uh, tools up here, do we have any questions, Steve? Uh, nope. Okay. Want more novels. More novels, I do too. I keep saying that I'm, I've started the fourth novel. There'll be about 10 in the series when I finish with them. And um, I really, really love the, the story of the women and the history and where it's going and moving through the Civil War. Um, the, the end of the third one, you can see them moving into the Civil War and what it was like in Texas. And then in the fourth one that I'm working on, it's uh, during the Civil War and all the different things that happened during that time. And um, I really like the story of the women and, and where it's where they're going and and uh, the just the courage and the perseverance they have is just pretty amazing and to think that these were women that were in our family is just um, just amazing to me to look back at the history of just the women in our family. Um, also, I want to uh, remind you guys that we have our quilt retreat. It's April. Uh, 19th to the 23rd. You can go to the website and get information on that. Now, this is not a normal quilting retreat that you've ever been to before. So you're going to travel in on Wednesday, get there Wednesday afternoon, 
We eat supper Wednesday night. We, we may come here to the studio where we film and to the warehouse where you can see the shipping and the fabric and all that. And then also the, our house is on that same property and you'll be able to see the quilts uh, that are in, our, in the house. When you stand in the entryway and just look at the entryway in the dining room, I think there's 97 quilts just in that part of the house. So it's kind of like a quilt museum. So it's a great, it's a great add-on that we've added for our retreat this year to come to the house to see the warehouse and to, to see all the quilts in the house. Now every night, so we go Sunday morning as a, uh, people leave and that's a travel day. So you have all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday to sew. You bring a square and a square project that you want to work on. There's me plus other teachers that are there. Kay, Kathy, Jenny, Sherry, and they're going to be there to help you with whatever it is that you're working on uh, with your square and a square project hands on immediately. They're also going to be teaching different things um, while they're there. And then every night we have a lecture. So Wednesday night, we could come to the warehouse. Thursday night, it may be a trunk show with Sherry. Um, Friday night, trunk show with Kay and Kathy. Then Saturday night, I'll do a trunk show. So it is, it is a jam-packed Wednesday through um, Sunday. And um, you have full-time teachers that are there. You have uh, little classes that you can participate in. You can work on your own projects. The building and the facilities are top-notch. There's nothing negative or, or bad. Everything is clean and nice and new and beautiful and spacious. Lots of sewing room. Everybody has their own design wall. The food is home-cooked right there in-house. It's, it's just, it, it is a, it is a, a half of a week and an experience that you will never forget. So I really encourage you to come. Don't put it off. We learned in the last few years how quickly our world can turn on a dime. So don't put stuff off. Don't wait. Come and enjoy and do it today. The world may go crazy. Your life may go crazy. Maybe you need to get away from your crazy life and come to the retreat. Get away from the crazy world and come to the retreat. I promise you, you'll have fun and you'll pick up new skills and get new knowledge and leave very, very happy and satisfied. Okay, so let's look at these two quilts that we're going to work on today. Now, if you're new to the square and a square system, the square and a square system is where you start out with a square, you surround it with strips, So it looks like this. You start out with a square, you surround it with strips. You can do any size that you want. We're going to use the mini square and a square tool today, and it will work on almost every size that you want to do. The mini is not for many quilts or many projects. It's for convenience of when you're working in a small space, or if you are working on some smaller pieces, it's, it's a little bit easier to work with. I always say it's like a, a screwdriver. It's If you have the right size of screwdriver, all of them screw the screw in. But if you have the right size of screwdriver, it can make it easier and faster and just better to do your work. That's why you have multiple sizes of screwdrivers. That's why we have multiple sizes of rulers. We have this one, the mini. We have the original one. Uh, which is a little bit bigger and then we have the grande tool and the grande um, is a multi-purpose uh, tool it will do a lot but you can use any of those for what we're doing today so when you look at our quilts this one is the missouri compromise it's in the Maley women book the blue one that goes with the novels and then this one is the prairie claw block and it is in the square in a square reference book volume one and if you're just getting started with Square and a Square, this is the book we recommend that you start with. It teaches the square options, which means the options that start out with a square in the middle, and those are options one through 17. Plus it has charts and sizes over 30, uh, I'm sorry, over, oh gosh, all of a sudden I forgot how many quilts. Um, I'm gonna say over 30, over 30 quilts and then over, um, 50 different sizes of blocks in here. So this is a jam-packed book. I use this one every time I'm in my sewing room. I go back to the charts, I look up a picture, I, you know, whatever. Um, this is uh, many times when I'm helping people on the quilt text line, 
this is the book that I'll have in the video. I'll say go to page 34, look at this picture right here, go to page whatever. Here are some sizes that you can use to help you do whatever it is you're doing. So when you have the right tools in your hand, you're going to accomplish amazing, amazing, amazing things. Okay, so... Let's look at how we're going to make our uh, prairie cloth. So let's look at the quilt. Whoops, that's all right. Let's look here. So we have two different sizes of blocks. The colors in our particular one right now are staying the same. So this square is a little bit larger. This square is a little bit smaller. So when you're doing the prairie claw, make sure that you are cutting the right one and when you get ready to trim it, that you're trimming it um, correctly. So the large one is going to turn into our flying geese. We're going to get two of those out of our square. So can you see how when we get this one trimmed up with the tool, we're going to get two flying geese out of it. And out of the smaller one, we're going to get one option one. So option one square and a square, option three flying geese. Let's look up here at our quilt and let's break it down and let's see what we've got. So the old traditional name for this one, if you look up this particular block here, uh, if you look it up, it'll say Devil's Claw. Now I grew up as a little girl in Kansas and I knew exactly what a Devil's Claw was. On the flatlands of Kansas, when the wagons would roll across, there would be kind of a long, um, it was a weed, um, it, the claw would open up on the, the bud or the bloom of the weed and it would be about the size of your hand and the claws would come out like this and they were really like a claw. And then in the middle where the seed was is kind of a long gated seed in there and it was probably about two inches and it kind of looked like a face. So it kind of looked like a head with these two big long horns or claws coming off of it. Now as they were going across the, the prairie on the wagon train, the Oregon Trail, all of that, the long skirts of the women, you know, would brush along as they would go, and those would catch on the skirts of the women as they walked. Now, as I was a little girl, I would walk from the house to the barn to feed the animals, and the devil's claws would get caught on my pant legs. Um, if I had a scarf in the winter that blew off, they would catch on that scarf. They would catch in the laces of your shoes, your boots, or your tennis shoes. And they also caught on, we had a little wagon that we would pull that had the hot water to milk them, to mix the powder with, with the milk for the little baby calves that were bucket fed. And, and uh, they would catch on the wheels of that little wagon. So I definitely know what a devil's claw is and how they, they hook on everything. So they made a pattern called devil's claw and this is what it, it looked like and I call it prairie claw because I grew up on the plains of, of uh, Kansas on the prairie and I just thought that was a fun, fun thing to do. So when you look at the block, I always like and I always teach in all of my classes to look at how the block is constructed because if you can break the block down and you can see the options of the square and a square system, then you know this is a, a quilt that you can whip out. This quilt of the prairie claw is the quilt that I taught for probably 30 years while I was on the road. I would go to a guild or a shop, I would give a lecture, and then I would do a six hour workshop, and this was always the one that we did. Most people would look at it and say, oh, that's not a beginner block, that's not a beginner quilt, or um, not only as a beginner in if, uh, being a seamstress, but a beginner with the square and a square system. But this was a great one to learn how to make option ones and option threes and put them together to build a beautiful block. Because when you start looking at quilts and breaking them down, all of them are option one, square and a square, option three, flying geese, option four, half square triangles. Almost everything you make are those three options. And they're just gonna start out like this with a square in the middle and strips on the side. So let's look at the rows. Look, look at the blocks and kind of see how they're broke down and how you're going to construct them. So when I look at the very top row, I see a plain square, a rectangle, a flying goose, a rectangle, and a plain square. So that's my top row, 
And of course, that's my sides and my bottom row here. So what that leaves is this inside here. And when I look at the inside, I see it as a nine patch. I see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And in that, we have an option one, square and a square. We have a plain square, an option one, and then they just are opposites throughout that, that center section. So we're gonna cut option ones, and we're gonna cut flying geese so that you can see how easy it is to actually build that block and put it together. So our larger square, now when you're following the patterns in the book, they tell you exactly how much fabric you need, it tells you how many squares to cut, how many strips to cut, the size, all of that, um, all of that is in there for you on the pattern. So I'm gonna go to the mini ruler and I'm going to put the tip of the 90. Let me just put this under here and let's look down here at the ruler. So where, where you see the 90 come together, maybe we can zoom in on this a little bit. So for those that are brand new, can get the hang of what we're doing. Zoom in and I'll move it where I need to move it. There we go, okay. So right here where these lines come together and touch, that's a 90, that arc in there is a 90. And when you look at a square, that's what you have. You have the point, which is where the 90 will go. You have the black lines that go right over your seam. And then this grid line will come right through here and shoot through that point. Now, because I've got black on here today, you may not be able to see these lines on here as well. That's why I'm using it on the white paper so that you can see. We're gonna put the tip of the 90 right in the tip of that square and we're gonna cut right here and see that fourth of an inch? That's your seam allowance off of that point that you need so that everything is, um, has your points and your seam allowances and everything's positioned right where it needs to be. So you can take this and sew it uh, back to your next piece, okay? So let's look, uh, this bigger one is for our flying goose. So let's trim our smaller one for our option one first. So I'm going to take this, the 90, and I'm gonna push it into the corner, and I'm gonna line the black lines of the 90 right over the seam, and I'll just go real slow here so you can see how it's going up in there. So push that 90 right into the corner. Your black lines go right over your seam, and look how that grid line goes right through the point. So by putting the ruler on your, your basic square, you know immediately how well you, as a human, did your cutting of the square, the sewing of the strips, and then of course the pressing. That's where we either gain accuracy or lose accuracy is in the human element of the cutting, the sewing, and the pressing. So when the tool goes in here, it, uh, it's, it's allowing you to get a perfect point even if you didn't do a good job on your cutting, sewing, and pressing, and it's going to keep the block square. Normally, if you didn't do a good job, if you were off, then it's going to affect the final results. But with the square and square system, you can improve upon it as you go along. So here I go, I just cut that corner. There's my fourth of an inch right there. And we're just gonna turn and rotate around and do that on all four corners. Now, as I go around where I've already cut down here, I want to look at the fabric that's underneath it. I want to look at the edge where I've cut, and I want to look at the lines on the ruler, and I want to make sure that the fabric and the lines are parallel. Not that they stack right up on top of each other, but they're nice and even and parallel because the ruler will do any size. So this fabric underneath here radiates out depending on the size that you're working with. Now, slightly blunted corners. I get all kinds of emails and text questions. My corners are blunted. What did I do to do wrong? Well, if they're too blunted, then yeah, you're gonna run into trouble. But if you'll look at your pictures in your book, you'll see that they're slightly blunted and that's okay. It just helps eliminate extra fabric in the seams and it helps you save fabric. Now, if it's too much, then you've either cut the wrong size of square or strips or your seams are too big or you're trimming it wrong with the, with the square and the square tool. So you'll need to go back and check those areas and see what happened where you, where you got, 
got off at. So here are the um, option ones, the square in a square. And let's look back up here at our quilt and see where those are going to go. So here you can see in this one here, we have an option one, a plain square, and an option one. And then in the middle section, we have one option one in the center with plain squares on each side. And then down here at the bottom, we have two again with the plain square. It's the same as the top. So right there is your center section of the quilt. Just that easy, just that quick, and just with that much speed and accuracy. So now let's look at our flying geese. And let's look at our finished results and let's talk about how we're going to get them. So we're going to start out with one basic square just like we did here. And our size is a little bit larger because of the way that we trim and that we cut in half. We have to create a seam allowance in here where we didn't have one. See, we didn't, have, we didn't cut this one in half. We have to move our points. See how these two edges where we cut through here, these are sharp. We call that the Texas two-step. And see how those are going to line up and be a good size for you to match up. So we're going to trim two corners, leaving a fourth of an inch, just like we did here, leaving the fourth of an inch. And on these two corners, we're going to do the two-step, the Texas two-step. So let's look at our ruler and see how to do the two-step. We know if we push the 90 in there, in the corner, how to leave the fourth of an inch, but how do we trim it sharp? So we're going to push the 90 in the corner, and then we're going to step it over two lines. One, two. That's why we call it the two-step. You push the 90 in there, and then you step one, two. And you put the end or the tip of the line right where it comes off um, the edge of the ruler into the corner and the tip so that it gives you this sharp, cut as you um, as you trim it up. So let's look at how we do that. And you're going to do that to two opposite sides. Now you can switch up colors. You can put certain colors in certain corners. I'm not going to address that today, but it's very easy to change your colors and just trim the same way and get, uh, get different looks. So um, I may have one with me that I can show you a different switch up um, here in a minute, we'll see. Okay, so here if I was gonna leave the fourth of an inch, so for the two opposite corners that wind up being the beak or the nose of the goose, and if I'm gonna trim sharp, I'm gonna step it over two. So here's one, two, I slide it, step it, one, two. I make sure it's nice and sharp right in that corner. I'm gonna come back to that tip and look for a new grid line that shoots through the corner. See, before we had this 90 one that did. I'm gonna hand flat, I'm gonna make my cut, and look how nice and sharp that is. Now, when I come back and sew a fourth of an inch here and a fourth of an inch here, right there is going to be my point. So if you're going to cut it up and re-sew it, you have to do the two-step and trim it sharp because you have to move, we call move the points and create a seam allowance in here where you didn't have one. So there's the 90, two step it over. I'm doing it on the opposite corner and I'll check and make sure it's sharp down the seam, through the grid and where I've already cut, I wanna check and make sure that those lines are parallel so that my block will stay square and neat looking when I'm done. So there's the two step there and there. Now on these other two sides, we're gonna leave the fourth of an inch. So I just push the 90 in there, leaves the fourth of an inch, my grid line through the point. I'll come over here and look where I've already cut to make sure that my block is staying square. Turn it, see there's the fourth of an inch, there's the two step. So this one will be a fourth of an inch because see how they're opposite. So flying geese don't have to be scary you don't have to look at quilts where there's triangle units and say, oh my, I don't know that I can make that quilt. There's too many triangle units. You can see how nice and neat and flat and smooth your work is. So I just took the ruler and just laid it through those sharp points. I do like to look at the horizontal and vertical lines and make sure that everything is staying true and neat underneath. Then just make your cut and wow, right there are my two flying geese. So they're gonna go, I don't have all the pieces here, but um, you can kind of see how 
those are going to do that and your fine geese go on the other side. Let's look up here at our picture, at our quilt. You can see how the option ones are here and the flying goose is on the solid unit. So that's just how simple, neat, and easy this quilt is to do. Another variation that you can do with these colors and these designs is, is that here you could use the yellow fuzzy leaf here and it will make the black stars kind of float a little bit. With a little bit of a print here, it makes every block very distinct. And if you want the, your work to kind of float on the quilt, then I recommend that you do the same yellow fuzzy leaf here, here, and not the, the dirt. Now, I really do like the dirt flaming bud in with all of these colors and in the quilt. And I want you to notice here, over here on this one that we did as a table runner, you can see how we put the block on point and we use that as a set in piece. So if you were making the, the large quilt, the inside pieces here, you could do the yellow fuzzy and then do some of this on the outside edge to incorporate the fabric because it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. And it's definitely one that you wanna put on the back of a quilt so that you can see the overall of the fabric because it is so um, stunning to do. Now I'm gonna show you one more um, option for the half square triangles. And we're going to look at the other Missouri Compromise quilt. Okay, to make half square triangles, you're going to cut the block like this one. This one we left as a whole piece. This one we cut in two pieces. And to make the half square triangles option four, we're going to cut it one more time. And we're going to get four half square triangles. Now we know anytime we're cutting through the point, we have to two step. So since we're gonna be cutting through the point like this, we have to two-step these also. So on our sample, we have to do that sharp trim on all four corners. So we've already gone into detail of how you do it, so I'm just quickly going to move around on the block. And since all four corners are trimmed the same, then you can just rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. When we do the flying geese, we do two sides, and then we go back and do the opposite two sides. We don't try to do it in a circle. What we, ruler are you using? I'm using the mini square and a square ruler. We have the mini, we have the original, and then we have the grande. And I'll, if you'll help me remember, I'll show those, um, those other ones. You can use any of them. I really, I really use all three. I love all three. They each have a little bit of difference in them, but they all trim um, the units and the way uh, for the system, so for the square. So now that we've done gone right up to the tip on all four, we're just going to come in here and cut. Just line the ruler up through those points. Don't let it wiggle and go through. And there I have four perfect half square triangles. I don't have to sew, I don't have to draw any grids, I don't have to sew on any paper, I don't have to do a craft project with starch before I get going. I just sit down and start cutting and sewing and I get my, my perfect shapes and, and units that I need. So let's look here at the, um, at the um, Missouri Compromise. Um, can we bring the camera out just a little bit? I'll move it around. But let's. So here's our half square triangles, option ones, uh, flying geese. Let's look at our block here. And we're again. This is that one there. So let's look. Let's look up here we did the uh, prairie claw which is found in the square and square reference book one the main book of the system and that was the one we just did and now we're going to look at the missouri compromise block and that whole quilt is in here now i just took two blocks and turned them into a table runner because i already have at least two big quilts of missouri compromise and so i didn't need another quilt with lots of blocks and these were the ones that I was using as a sample in the class that I was teaching and I had a sister that saw them and fell in love with them so 
the table runner is going to her as soon as class is over. Now also on the Melee Women pattern book, uh, if you're just wanting the pattern book, we have a couple of books that we call Scratch and Dent. They've got damaged in the shipping to us or something. Um, and so you can order just the book on the Scratch and Dent sale. If you're doing the, um, the special where you get the book and the novels, it's the, the new pretty books. It's not the Scratch and Dent ones, okay? You have to order those separate. Um, is the mini ruler the first ruler to buy? Um, you can really start with any of the, the rulers. Let's look at them. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Um, let's look down here on our table. Okay. This is the um, multi-purpose ruler. This is the one that we call the Grande. There is a great video on the website that will show you all of the different things that this one will do. It has the nice nine inch corner square that I use all the time. You can cut your squares and strips. It has the blue lines on it that is the 90, just like you saw me using with the, the mini. It has the, the 90 on it, so just like everything I did today, you can do with it. And then it also has this red line on here, and the red line is what helps you cut a diamond, because the options 1 through 17 start out with a square, so options 1 through 17 start out with a square in the middle, but options 18 to 39 start out with a diamond in the middle. So to cut this diamond, this red line is here to help you do that. In fact, we had people really struggling with just the concept of how to cut this center diamond, and that was what promoted us to make another ruler. But I never make a ruler that only does one thing. I make rulers that do multiple things or I won't um, make them because I don't want a piece of plastic that only does one thing sitting on my sewing table. So I always push to see what else can I make um, and what other lines and angles do I need on here to do um, something a little better or a little different than what I already have. So that red line here is for it. Go to the website squareandsquare.com, watch the video on that ruler and it will teach you um, all of the different purposes of it. Then the original ruler here, you can see how it's kind of a, a medium size, and it is the one that I started with. We call it the original, and usually we recommend that you start with the original because the original will trim your square options 1 through 17, and it will trim your diamond options um, all the way up to 39. So it, it does the trimming on all of the, the different options. The Grande, the one I just showed you, will trim up this one, 1 through 17. It will make the diamond, but it won't trim the diamond, okay? But the original does, so hopefully that is... Are they non-slip? Um, well, we want them to move around a little bit. Um, people are always wanting to put like grippers and stuff on the back but you don't really know how to use the ruler yet, so you don't know where to put the grippers. You can put the grippers on there, but we really want the rulers to be able to move around on your fabric so that you can get those pieces cut perfect. I am not a fan of rulers that hook like on the edge of your cutting table, supposedly to keep it straight or to keep it from moving or things that click together or whatever. I'm not a fan of those because, or even like of the machines that cut the fabric, because if the fabric is not put down perfect, then that machine is not going to cut it perfect and those rulers are not going to cut it perfect. So to me, you can either spend the time making sure that the fabric is down perfect, or you can just put the ruler on there and be able to maneuver it so that it is perfect on there. And I like to be able to control the ruler. It has as much as you not, can put on it. Yeah, not at not the fabric. So I don't that's that's why we make them the way that we do. Okay? All right. So um uh and then there's the, the mini ruler. The mini ruler, um, people were requesting a smaller ruler, smaller ruler, and I'm like, you don't need a smaller ruler. Our our original does everything. They're like, no. We want one for smaller spaces, for smaller pieces. It's for convenience. We understand the grande, I mean, we understand the original will do it, but we want one for convenience. So when I made them the smaller ruler, I, of course, I always want to 
add something that we don't have. And so we added this little four inch corner square on here. This is great for cutting squares. It's great for measuring your pieces because you can use it to trim just like I did today. And then you can flip it over and you can check and you can see if your work is the size that you want it to be. You can see like when we have two sizes today that we're working on, you've got this right here where you can go over and check the back of this one, check the back of the other one. You're like, okay, this is, this is for the option ones. It's two and a half. This one's two and seven eighths. It's for my fine geese. So it's a, it's a measuring device that's already on your table and easy to use. And I use this little four inch over here every day that I am at my cutting table. I, I really love uh, the mini. In fact, if I don't have to use the original or I don't have to use the grande, the one that I pick up off of my tool rack is the, is the mini. So hopefully that helps you uh, with that. And many people have all three. I use all three and love all three. Okay, other questions? Let's get back to our block. Okay, so here's our half square triangles, option four. Here's our flying geese, option three. Option one is square and a square. And option two is where you just sew around it again and you get multiple units. I don't know if I have a little sample here. Here you can see. So this is like an option two. So we had our square in the middle and we put the red strips on and trimmed it up just like an option one. And then we sew strips around it again, trim it up the same way, leaving the fourth of an inch. And so this is an option two, meaning that you sew around that center square two times or more. You can just, you can sew again, again, again. And every time you're just gonna get larger triangle units on that side and that's option two. So you can see how they just grow and, and build off of each other. All right, let's look back at our Missouri Compromise because this block looks hard. So here it is, it looks hard. Once again, um, let's divide it into the sections. I always teach, let's look and see how to uh, break it down. So once again, this is kind of a nine patch setting. You have three um, sections that you're going to build going across the top. So just a plain square in the corners. So this would be one, two, three. So it kind of goes together like a nine patch. And this center section, of course, is, is a rectangle type shape. But we're going to look at how to build this. You can use a flying goose right here if you wanted to, or you can use half square triangles. It all depends on if you want to seam in there or not. So let's look at, you can see how this right here is a flying goose. And then you have a half square triangle coming off of the side. And of course these sizes are not cut to be for this quilt. These are the ones that are cut for the prairie claw. But we're just looking at the placement and what units that you need. So here you can see your flying goose or you can use two half square triangles and then you have another half square triangle and then you just have that little corner. And then down here, you have a larger flying goose with half square triangles. So you can see how those are gonna go there and there, and there and there. And then you have that large flying goose. And then in our next section here, let's see what we have. So this is like a little block all on its own. So you could put any block inside here and then add these beautiful crowns to each side of it and that would be really pretty to do. And of course the pattern adapting is, is in our reference book with our charts. Page 34 starts and there's 12 pages of charts. And so all of these are gonna help you with your sizes so that you can use this and build out. And that's what I love about this system is that you can take a block and then you can just start switching it up and just come up with something that is totally different. So here you can see kind of the same repeat. You remember we had a flying goose with two half square triangles. Here we have a flying goose with two half square triangles and then just the corner squares. So this row here is the same as this one here. Now where it gets different, and of course those are on the all, all of the sides of it, 
Here we have an option one in the middle. So we just did a large option one, or larger. So see, this was our square in the middle. We put the black strips on the side, made our option one, and then come in here and add um, the flying geese and some half square triangles here. And then on the top and the bottom of this block, we're going to add the corner squares to that same section that you used here for the top and the bottom. And then that is how it is um, on the outside edge that we've already talked about. So see how that right there is the same as this. So you can see how this crown shape, these crown shapes that are here on the outside edge, you can build them and make them to go on the inside of any block right here. And I love how the square and a square just opens up possibilities and so many versatile things where you can take an idea or a concept and then just switch it or build on it and come up with something that's really, really beautiful. Now in our table runner quilt, we put it on point and of course that kind of changes the look of the block anytime you put a block on point and then we added um, our side setting triangles to it. So let's look up here at our table runner. So I made my two uh, Missouri Compromise blocks and then I did um, one set of side triangles and it made it this kind of pointed part and I just came in and sewed strips on each side, trimmed it off at the angle that I needed and everything was just straight line sewing. There's no set in pieces or anything. Went on out with the, the same green fuzzy that I used here in the block and uh, did the black sticks for the border. And if you're new to our system, we also have a binding tool. It's called the shortcut binding tool and it does your binding and this beautiful little flange right here all at the same step time. It's all one step. And then, um, it's quilted with the black stick on the on the back, and uh, I'm going to see sister number two in about a week, and she's not watching today because she's working. This is going to go. It's going to go to her house and live on her table. So I'm glad you guys got to see it, and we got to teach off of it before um, it got sent to its new happy home. So if you have any questions, remember uh, type them in, and I'll help you today. And uh, remember the quilt hotline. And I have a couple of um, I have a couple of things here. So um, this one, um, um, people will text me or they'll email me or, or something, and the, and they'll say different things. So this one is about the shortcut binding tool, and it says the shortcut binding tool is great. The only thing I'm sad about is that I didn't buy it sooner. So that, that's a pretty good recommendation for the shortcut binding tool. And then this one says, uh, Jody, I watched the session today. This was back last fall. And it's on a very new method with half square triangles that we call the Firefly. We've only been teaching it in our premium club, but we will teach it in Quilt Club Week this year. And we have a new book that's coming out this spring. Um, hopefully in April next month, and it's called the Firefly. And it's a way that you can put multiple half square triangles together, like you see here in this quilt, and you do them all at once. Um, and I'm not going to show that today. We'll do a video um, here real soon in the next couple of weeks that shows you the Firefly. Make sure that you like our YouTube or our Facebook. Make sure you go to the website and get on our email list, and then you won't miss any of our teachings when we have them uh, for you. So she says, Jody, I watched the session today on the Firefly. The light bulb went on for me for so much of the square and a square system. It is truly amazing how you make things so much clearer and with better understanding. Thank you, Steve and Jody, for sharing all of this with us. And then this one, um, she said, Jody, I can't thank you enough for all that both of you do. Being out in the country with no local guild or quilt shops, your premium club has been my learning center. It's been my um, friendship in quilting 
And she said, I love to be able to go back in and watch the classes online at my own leisure. And that's one thing that we love about teaching online is that you can do it at your own leisure and you can go back in and watch it over and over again. If you, you know, went to a big quilt show and you took a class uh, with me or any other teacher, it's just for the three hours or the six hours and then it's over and you don't get to zoom in and get close up or still have access to the teacher. And with our text hotline, the 817-713-2879, you always have access to us to show us your work, to ask for help. So the class is never over. The party never ends. You just can have uh, keep on learning and keep on having fun. So I really recommend come to the retreat here in just a couple of weeks. Um, it, we are just a little bit north and west, the retreat center of the Dallas Metro. So if you're flying in, you'd fly into Dallas. We have a shuttle that will pick you up. We make it just as easy for you as possible. If you are flying in and you can't bring a machine, you'll fill that out on the form and we'll have a machine here for you. If you're driving, then you know, you'll know you drive to the, uh, to the west side of the Dallas Metro. The retreat center is a working ranch. It is out in the middle of a big ranch and it's very relaxing and quiet and um, only the stars, uh, the stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. So this one uh, says, um, um, she tells me a lot of stuff and she says, with all of this being said, Premium Club was the best money I spent on quilting. I'm starting at the beginning watching everything. It's like being in college again. You cover all the ways of learning. There's three ways to learn. There's visual, there's reading, and then there's visual and reading and lecture. And she said, your handouts are great. They're on a college level of teaching, but don't let that scare you off because everything is made very simply. I have enjoyed all that I've got to watch so far. Um, uh, she said, uh, fate was with me when I found you and Steve and um, um, she just goes on to talk about how exciting it is and how much she's learning. Um, and she really has a big, I don't know if Steve's read this, but she really has a big shout out to Steve for helping uh, all of us quilters and uh, doing all of this so that we can teach online. So um, I think it's great for those of you that are new to Square and Square or new to us. Maybe you're thinking about, I would really love to up my game. Um, it's not fun to travel anymore. Maybe it's not as easy to travel or financially to travel anymore to go to all the shows and here you can watch it online you can work at your own speed you can back it up and watch again and you know that the class is never over you can always text us you can always email us and uh, we've got more classes and lectures and webinars coming all all the time so i really can't say enough to encourage you implore you to go in and join quilt club week or join Premium Club, Quilt Club, Club Week is a part of that. So Quilt Club Week is an excellent value. Like right, we um, have it divided up into semesters. So we have a fall semester. Usually a semester has a theme. We have our spring semester. It starts um, early January, goes to about Mother's Day. The fall one starts after Labor Day and goes up to the holidays. And um, every Monday we, get a, um, we teach a class and um, a lot of people are used to learning by saying, by project. So they're like, oh, I want to make that quilt. They don't think about what they're going to learn when they're making that quilt. They just want to make that quilt. And we do do projects, but I really want to switch your thinking up. And I want you to think about not that, oh, I want to make that quilt. Well, yes, we're going to make it. And yes, you can make it. But I want you to start thinking about what can I learn in the process of making that quilt. And so that's how all the, the semesters are structured. Not so much in the project. Um, you don't need another project. You want skills and knowledge. So it's what you're gonna learn in the process of making it. What you're gonna learn with the cutting, what you're gonna learn with the pressing. We go more in depth with pressing than anyone else that I've ever seen. And I get lots of uh, text and emails, people telling me I have learned more with what you have taught in pressing than I have in my whole entire life with pressing. No one ever tells us how to press or why we should press this way. And so 
and what the outcome will be when you when you press this way or that way and how important it is. I've seen more work ruined at the iron than I have at the rotary cutter or at the sewing machine. And so to me, the pressing is very valuable and very, very important to do. We have a whole, um, one of our semester classes was a, um, what we called our beginner series. And we went through everything. We went through cutting, we went through pressing, we went through the different tools and rulers, how to use them. Um, then we show a quilt in what you can make to follow up with what you've learned in it. We talked about textiles. We talked about why different fi fibers react a different way. We talked about different qualities of fabric, what you can find at a chain store, what you find at a quilt shop, and, and so on. And then with me being a fabric designer and loving color, then you get all of that aspect in the, in the textile class. We even have videos where we've been to silk factories and watched them. Uh, take the little silkworm and turn it into the beautiful fabric. Uh, how the fabric is woven with um, two different directions of fibers and those different fibers, how they react. So you can really learn a lot and to know more of why certain things are done a certain way and why certain things turn out a certain way. Uh, with the pressing, I just want you to think about how the cotton was a living fiber at one time. And so it still has characteristics of a living thing. And so, you know, think about yourself as a living thing. If you feel heat coming to you, you're gonna to start to move away. So when you're using the heat of the iron to press, those cotton fibers are moving away. That's why the fibers move. And of course, um, being a fiber is like your hair. If you have straight hair, you know that humidity and heat will make your hair do a certain thing. If you have curly hair, you know that humidity and heat will affect your hair and make it do a certain thing. Uh, it can either bring it into control or it can take it out of control. And that's the same way with pressing with our cotton fibers. You can learn to press to, to bring your fibers into control and to change them or they will go crazy and why, why it's happened. Question. About the side triangles, how do you do that? Okay, the side triangles I really don't, um, that's one of our classes in our beginner series is is doing the side setting triangles. In our book, I think on page 12, we give you the charts and the diagrams of how to do that. I don't really have any any samples here to, to lay it out um, for you in class today. But uh, we teach every aspect of, of quilting. And that might be something good that I do in, in one of our next um, webinars is to, one of our free webinars like today is to show that for you. Um, I'm trying to think. I know it's in Premium Club. I think we did one in Quilt Club Week. Yeah, we did it in Quilt Club Week, uh, maybe last year of 2022, and then we added it to the Premium Club videos in the beginner section. Anytime I make a new video on something and it goes into a certain category like beginners or technique or whatever, then in the Premium Club uh, website, it's moved to that module so you can go to like the beginner series in the module and you can see all the different classes that are listed underneath it. And that's a great place to go to learn um, some of those basic beginnings um, on there. Another question? Does it make a difference on what weight of thread you use? I was told to use 80 count thread instead of 50. I use 50. Um, you need to remember that um, all of the, the different threads have a different weight. That means that it's skinny or that it's fatter. Now, if you have a, um, if you're working with miniatures and the pieces are very, very tiny, you don't want a very uh, thick or heavy thread. So go with a thinner thread if you're working with miniatures. Um, but for just normal quilting and normal size, I think that 50 weight is best. But um, also make sure you use a good quality of thread. Um, the fabrics, if you're using a good quality of fabrics, those fabrics are going to last hundreds of years. And so you don't want your quilt coming apart because the thread was not woven correctly and not a good quality thread. Um, I like Mettler. I like, um, uh, oh, this applique one is a uh, Guterman. I like a Guterman for my applique, 100% cotton. Um, I like a Mettler to sew with. Uh, the silk finish, and then also, I never know if I pronounce it correctly, your fill. I really like that one, and that one I buy in a 50 weight. It's a good quality thread, um, but also depending on what kind of machine you have, some machines are very picky as to what kind of thread that you use, so um, you want to 
you know, if you if you if you have a thread that you're using and you don't like it, it maybe isn't that the thread isn't um, acceptable. It could be that it's not working with your machine to get the best quality out of it. So if you do have a dealership close and you're having problems with your thread in your machine, maybe check with your dealer as to what thread they recommend on there. And um, the thread is, since the thread is a thickness, it matters. So you, you put your two pieces of fabric together and you sew and make your seam. And then when you open it up, you know, uh, that thickness in there is going to make it either a bigger bump, a bigger curb, um, or a thinner curb. So make sure you use um, a thickness of a thread that gives you the best quality of your work that you have. So I've got a couple of other things I want to show you and then we'll, we'll wrap up our video today. Good. Good? Okay. So I had another block here that had some greens in it and I wanted to show it to you. Uh, so that you can see some of the other fabrics um, that we, uh, you'll see them on the website. So this one here is called the Black Flaming Bud. We worked today with the Dirt Flaming Bud. Right here is the Dirt Flaming Bud. And here you can see it in the black and then we also have it in a gold. Here um, in our green pack that is on sale is the design of the fabric and then here you can see it in the black. And then there's also one that's a gold. Really gorgeous, gorgeous piece of fabric. I hope you guys really take advantage of these uh, fabric bundle sales that we have. Once again, let's uh, break the block down, learn how to look at a block and break it down. So once again, this one is uh, done in three sections of rows. So there's the top row. Here's the uh, middle section here of the design. And then of course the the bottom looks like this but when i constructed the quilt i did it in um, three sections i did corners like this so here is the corner section and it was the same for all four corners you can see half square triangles here here and here now part of that new firefly block that we'll be teaching in april for you make sure you get on the e go to the website get on the email list so you don't miss any of our teachings you'll get um, an email and then you can watch on YouTube or Facebook. And then of course, if you're in any of the clubs, we'll have them there too. But see how half square triangles are notorious at getting uh, the wrong color on the wrong side and getting sewn together wrong. A lot of half square triangles get ripped out, not because of your, um, uh, of your, not because it's, it, they get ripped out because you've got them turned wrong. So with the Firefly, they don't get turned wrong. So once you get them put in place, they're not going to be turning on you. And you can sew multiple half square triangles together. I love, love, love that. So here's the corner section. And it's kind of like a nine patch. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All four corners are the same. This is our black tattered and torn. Or you can use the black flag. This is our green stick. And this is our tan fuzzy leaf, our lightest um, color. And then you have this center unit right here. And it's two flying geese with a rectangle. So you look at this, you look at the this one that I think has about 90 pieces in it, and you realize how easy it is to make. So you can see these flying geese sections are here plain square in the middle, and then our corners. So it really goes together very quickly. And then you can see like this one, this one right here. This one I think has 127 pieces in it. Normally you would look at this block and it'd be a nightmare. Look how nice and neat your, your backs are. Uh, we do press open a lot. We talk about that in all of our teaching. Both of these blocks were blocks and quilts that we taught in our premium club. This is a brand new block called Night Star. It will be in the Firefly book uh, when we finish with it and have it ready to roll. And now I want to show you one more thing. So let's look at this block. And all of this comes from our hen house. And I love, love, love everything that we're doing with the hen house. 
And this little book is going to show you how to make your hen house blocks. And then it's going to give you quilt patterns, charts, and multiple ideas of how you can use this particular one. This is just one. I have made quilt after quilt. I've been doing the hen house for about a year now. And I have, um, me and my premium club members, we have got the hen house bug really, really bad. We just, and it's a great way to go in and use up your scraps. If you do have Quilt Club Week or you're gonna join Quilt Club Week, go into Quilt Club Week 2020. We talk about how to organize your scraps and how to do all of this, this hen house work. So let's look at our block. So here we have three flying geese, just like this, just like we cut, like you saw me cut earlier, three flying geese. We've done them all scrappy. We put three together, and just like we had a square here, and we surround it with strips, we have a rectangle, and we surround it with strips. Now notice how I have background color on three sides, and I have color on the nose of the goose. So you can see, here's my three flying goose, my three flying geese, here are my three background colors, and then here is the color on the nose of the goose. How many times do you just have little scraps like this left over? These quilts are made totally from um, scraps. So we're gonna go in here and trim this just like an option one. How did we trim an option one? We left the fourth of an inch on all four corners. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go in here and leave a fourth of an inch on all four corners. So I'm just putting the 90 in the corner of that rectangle and see this, see this piece right here? This piece right here was already a scrap I had left over, but it's large enough that I can take it and sew it on the bottom of another one and it will be big enough for this piece. So all of this is just, I'm gonna say, upcycled, 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 upcycled. So that one's little, I'm not going to keep it, but this one's big enough, I'm going to keep it and add it to some other ones. And these little hen house quilts, it's just crazy how you just start one and then you, you start another and then you start another. Okay, so there's my block, just like that, and look how that's going to go in here and of course here and here and then I just have a plain rectangle and a plain square in the middle so this quilt all started out and I cut squares um, the size I don't remember the sizes but I cut squares this size for my flying geese and then I cut this square which is a little bit bigger for the center I kept those in a stack and then um, I just kept going in fact I have a little bit of the the process here So you can just kind of see a little bit of, here are some, because as your scraps grow, you know, as you get scraps from making a quilt, I want to know right away how to use those in another project. I don't want to just put them all in a bin or a box or something. They get all wrinkled. You don't know what sizes, all of that. I want to know right away what I'm doing with these um, scraps or pieces that I have. So in this stack here, you can see how this stack needs to be pressed and trimmed, just like I had. Um, look at this one here at the bottom. See that bottom? That's what I'm talking about. See, I, I used one of these to go on the bottom here. And so I just, I just keep taking my scraps and putting them into another project, depending on the size of the scrap that I need. So see, here's, and here's some of my little flying geese. These are going to all turn into my little flying geese here. So those are ready to trim. These are ready to press. Here's the process of getting um, the color at the top and a scrap at the bottom. That's what all of these are here. They need to be pressed and the other two sides sewn on. And then here is a into bolt piece I've got. It's the color I'm working with, so it's in my basket here. And um, then, you know, once I know what sizes I'm working on, I just leave that with my box. 
So as I go through, and I know I have color that I need this size, I have color I need this size, and, and look at this little stack right here. These are leftover strips and pieces, and I know I'm going to need them at the top of my work, so I you know have them in here, these little scraps, so they're ready to roll. So that's kind of what this box is, is my, my beginning section. And so you can just see how I have process of all of this. So when I get scraps, I am ready to um, roll with them. So here are some pieces here. So here you can see all my, my little flying geese. I keep them in colors, keep them organized. And then let's look at what this one is. It's kind of like a treasure trove here. Let's see. So look at these when you start putting these together. This one right here is called Chicken Dash, and it's in the Hen House book. And um, I, I'm thinking that I love this uh, little churn dash in here that you get when you use the color um, on the end instead of keeping them all the same color. Put a color on the end and see how it adds another value of a goose. And I love how it makes that little scrappy churn dash right here in the middle. Now I may uh, put a star. Um, of course, I would be keeping my same colors, um, but I may come in here and do a little star. These, this is probably bigger than what I would really make it. I would go. I would keep my flying geese the same size as what I had here, and I would. Uh, maybe do a star here as a setting square and then that would add another element there and then just a sashing strip um, through there because if you put them side by side i love the block just as it is but if you sew the blocks side to side then you get another whole concept um, of what the the quilt is going to look like so this is kind of cool the way it all runs together so as much as all of this I have, I may have multiple, multiple ones that I'm working on. Now also for a border, look at this for the border. So if you um, wanted to do a border with it, see how you could do this nice zigzag border. It's, it's just endless on what you to do. I think that's why I love quilting so much is because you can do it like this and it'll look like that. You could do it like this and it totally changes the look, changing the design, changing the colors. It's just amazing and it's so, so fun, so super fun to do. Okay, I have, um, oh, I'll show you this one. Since we're doing, um, doing some of the the chicken, uh, the uh, hen house. This is one of the quilts that's in the hen house book. And here you can see how we've used a diamond to get these long pointed stars. Here's your hen house block and look how all of those colors are background colors. So it just makes the flying geese pop out. All of the colors are background. We didn't do a color at the nose of the goose. And then we used, and normally you would look at a quilt like this with all of these flying geese and you would say, oh my gosh, that is so pretty, but I'm not making all those flying geese. But when you have the square and square system to help you get the speed and the accuracy that you need, that it's not difficult to look at a quilt like this or make a quilt like this. You, um, I always say if you've been in the quilt world longer than 10 minutes, you've learned to look at a quilt and say if it's hard or easy by how many points and how many triangles, how many pieces and how many triangles. But with the square and a square system, it helps you up your game and you can become the piecer that you've always dreamed about. It gives you the speed and the accuracy and helps remove the imperfection that the human provides uh, when they get in there and start doing the cutting and the sewing and the pressing. And uh, this one here, I did the border like we were talking about. So here you can see the border in the zigzag and there's no color on the nose of the goose so you just see the flying geese going up, up and down, up and down. Really a pretty one. And a lot of our vintage fabrics would be really pretty in this particular quilt. Now, if we can get our cameraman uh, to slide over here to this quilt, this quilt right here is called Postage Stamp Star. And um, it is a kit that you can get. We have a couple of, we can, there's no kits sitting on the shelf, but we can build a couple of kits if you need it. We're just about out of some of these fabrics, and so 
that's when a, um, a kit becomes obsolete is when you can't do the fabric anymore. And I don't normally substitute something because you look at it that way, that's the way you want it. And so we don't, we don't substitute. If we do, then we, we tell you that there's a substitution, but we very rarely ever do that. Uh, but this one here, you can get this kit if you're wanting postage stamp star, jump on it right now. But the quilt top is also for sale. It's just the quilt top, and you can find it um, in the sale area on the website. And um, uh, we have one star flower left. If you're interested in the star flower, it's a queen size. We have one left. And then we also have this jingle jangle um, that is marked down to $1.95. It's normally $2.50. And I think there's only four of these left. And we did jingle jangle in quilt club week. Um, but even if you don't make the quilt exactly the way that uh, we show you, the fabrics, it's a great, uh, great way to get fabrics at a discounted price because this is normally $2.50 and it's on sale for $1.95. We've got the red floral, we've got the dirt, we've got the, the dirt tattered and torn. That's the same one I'm working with on our um, chicken dash scraps. And then we've got the red and tan checks. So, and this is the backing. So this also, it's the quilt top, it's the backing, the binding, and the pattern. And it is a great little bundle. And there's only, I think, maybe four of these left, and then that's it on it. So, last minute questions? Anyone? I don't think so. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our uh, lecture and our class today. I hope you, um, we had about an hour and a half uh, webinar. And go to the website, squareandsquare.com, check out those sales. Some of them are limited, so when they're gone, they're gone. But the ones that are not, like our green kit and our neutral uh, bundle, those two, that's our new vintage fabric. So. We still have plenty of that fabric, but the sale will go to the end of the month on um, those items. Remember the Christmas pattern? There's only one. Americana, there's just two or three of those left. So jump in there and take advantage of those specials. And those of you that are in Premium Club, we'll see you on Monday for our next class. Remember our text line, 817-713-2879. Remember to join our email list. And if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, make sure you subscribe and like and share and all of that. And um, our retreat is April 19th to the 23rd. I really implore you to come. It will be one of the best quilting events that you've ever done in your life. And um, make sure you go in and sign up for Premium Club or Quilt Club Week and start learning and enjoying and watching um, today. Remember, you can become the piecer that you've always dreamed of. Bye for now.